Hey everybody, good afternoon, good afternoon. My name is Alex, let me move that down a little bit, there we go. My name is Alex, very glad that you're here with me today. And our class that we're gonna to cover today is Google School, so welcome, welcome. Feel free to post any kind of comments in the chat and everything. Let me introduce myself, my name is Alex Cooper. I teach the computer classes for the Columbia County Libraries um, in Georgia. The at the Columbia County Library in Evans, the Harlem Library, and of course the Uchi Creek, now the Grove Town Library. Yay! <laughs> uh, you know, we have moved, of course, to our YouTube channel here. Uh, one of the things you need to do with our YouTube channel is you do need to be signed into YouTube to be able to post any questions into the chat and also to like and subscribe to our videos as well, okay? Of course, we're all at home still, staying safe, and I hope that you're staying safe too. <laughs> so we're not doing any on-ground classes at our libraries. We're just doing our virtual classes here. 
So definitely feel free to share them with others and to let other people know about our classes as well. Okay, so let's talk about our classes a little bit here. So the big one is, have any questions, post it in the chat. Um, happy to help in any way. Uh, to ask any questions, uh, I'll get to the answers eventually. <laughs> There's maybe a little bit of delay in between uh, posting there and also me seeing it as well. And I actually have two screens here and you'll see me looking to the right because that's the screen that you guys see, okay? Let's kind of talk about our schedule for the month. And our schedule for the month, last week we did Scratch to Python uh, Blocks to Coding. Um, so those videos should still be up and available here on our YouTube channel. Of course, we did Birding, a very, very fun class. Uh, now is a great time to do Birding if you're trying to stay home and safe. It's a really neat thing for friends and family to see out the back door. And it can even cause a... a whole community trying to decide about which bird you see and taking pictures of the birds, all kinds of stuff. We also covered library resources and apps and that's how we can get our free ebooks and everything. And this week we'll be covering Google School. Tomorrow at this same time we're going to be doing Google Suite. So we'll be talking about all the, the Google products, um, the suite, the, the programs that are like Word, Excel, and PowerPoint but free from Google. And then on Thursday, we're going to be doing eBay and Facebook Marketplace Internet Buying and Selling Basics. Now, tomorrow at 11 o'clock, we're going to be doing a brand new class, Video Creating Basics. We're going to be using the Windows 10 Photos app that comes with free with Windows 10. We're going to be creating some projects, and hopefully I'll be able to work it out that you'll be actually download some videos and do some a little bit of editing too. One of the things about it is we can do slideshows with it. We can add music, graphics. We can also make like little movies because there's special effects and 3D uh, monsters on there and all kinds of stuff and effects and snow effects and all kinds of stuff. It's going to be really fun. So come join me there tomorrow. That'll be our first time teaching that class. And then on Thursday, we're going to be doing our birding class at 11 o'clock. So come join me live. And here's the list of our other classes that we have going on for the rest of the month. And we'll be doing our video creating basics class again um, at the afternoon uh, for um, there. And then at the end of the month, we're going to be doing our introduction to Raspberry Pi. And then we'll be doing a gadget help morning and afternoon. So hopefully everybody will be able to fit me into their schedule. Uh, gadget help is a drop in. Uh, gadget help with Alex, that's me. Ask uh, questions about computers, cell phones, stuff like that. Um, and we'll have a good time there, okay? Okay, so just a little bit of a reminder. Our libraries are open um, with limited services and hours. Also, curbside holds pickup is available. So you can go to gchrl.org for more information about that and our other classes that are on there and libraries times um, other, other, bleh, other virtual classes like story time is on there too. And if you have any questions, you can call into the library Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And also don't forget to like our Facebook pages so you'll be up to date on what we're up to and what we're doing. And of course, like my videos, like the other videos that are posted by the librarians too. And also, of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Right now you're on our YouTube channel, but to find our channel, the easiest way to find it is to search YouTube for GCHRL videos, okay? So let's go ahead and let's get started here. Now this is a really fun class that we're going to be doing today. And let me see if I can fix that. There we go. Is that better? <laughs> Line was a little bit distracting. I won't be here all the time, of course. If I'm anyway blocking, I'll actually... Um, disappear so you can see that now so welcome welcome and also I'm actually going to post the handout so let me go ahead and get that I'll get to see my thinking face I'm doing something else I'm thinking thinking face on okay so I'm actually going to post this you should be able to view it and download it too into the chat 
So usually what we do in class, there's that. Usually what we do in class is basically everybody have a computer, okay? And you come in and sit down and I'd have a handout for everybody. Of course, we're doing this virtually too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna pull out, pull up the handout, have it on the screen. We'll cover uh, what our topic is and then I'll pull up the web browser and do it that way too. Now, I do actually recommend to have me on a separate little device. So you can kind of follow along with what I'm doing um, and hear me on the little device and then, excuse me, see me on the little device and then you can actually follow along maybe on your big computer in front of you, okay? So let's go ahead and let's get started with our Google School. Now, most of us have used Google <laughs> at least once or twice, okay? So the big thing about this is in our general internet uh, class, which we have one coming up near the end of the month. Let's see. Well, we talk about generally searching with Bing, of course, and then of course there's Google as well, but there's so many more things that Google does. So we are gonna be covering some of the basics of searching and here we go. Let me switch that. All right, now, so the basics of searching. Go ahead, go ahead. And then we'll go a little bit more beyond what most people do. And hopefully this will give you a little bit of idea. Hey, Mac, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Google Duo, okay, we'll definitely cover that. That's kind of like their video chatting service. The big thing about that, it's supposed to be used for iPhones and also the Android devices too. All right, so we're gonna be covering this. Also a big thing about um, not only are we going to be talking about a whole bunch of the different services that Google has to offer, we'll all be also be talking about some classroom services. And I'll, at the end, I'll just kind of walk through some of the ones that I think are important, things that you'll find in, um, interesting, and also maybe kind of get your mind to thinking a little bit more about keywords um, when you search uh, devices like Alexa or Siri or the Google or anything like that. Hey, Google. Um, we have any of those devices. I'm having to listen to make sure I haven't turned on any of my devices. Uh, so usually we kind of have one near us now, don't we? Uh, but kind of the way that you would ask them to do things, uh, kind of think about keywords. So we're going to be covering that. And also we'll be talking about the Google book. So let's talk about a little bit of an overview of what we're going to cover. And like I said, definitely feel free to ask any questions. I can go into more detail about stuff. Um, you know, if you ask a question about it, how about that? So let's talk about Google search and query. Okay. So we're going to cover that. We're also going to do an internet seek and find. So the idea is that we start with little information and then we actually use that information to learn more things. Okay. We'll also talk about Google books a little bit and a little bit of a demonstration on that. We'll also talk about Google docs briefly. And the reason I uh, set up this class is because not only will we talk about Google Docs briefly here, but tomorrow we have a whole class about Google Docs and using the different um, programs that um, Google Docs has to offer. Okay. And every, every, all three of those are going to get their own little section tomorrow. Okay. This is just kind of a brief overview of it. Uh, so we'll also talk about Google Photos as well. We'll also talk about Google Scholar and then we'll Google Translate and then we'll kind of go along with the page and I'll get to show you some of the other things that are really interesting that Google's working on or maybe you didn't even know that were free and available. Now everything we're going to talk about today is free. Uh, if you just have a Gmail account, um, if you just have a Google Docs account, then you can cover all the things we're going to cover today. Of course there's always a premium version of something if you want a more hard drives, virtual cloud hard drive space. Um, then you could get that as well, but nothing today that you're going to need to be able to do that. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and I'm actually going to disappear. So I will say bye bye. So let's talk about what is Google. Okay. All right, 
right? So Google was founded in 1998, okay? It is a search engine. Some would say a web crawler. So basically it scans the web for keywords and phrases, okay? And then it takes those keys and phrases and it allows us to search based on the keywords. And some folks will ask basically a question. A lot of the time that, that can actually get answered, pull up the right website, but sometimes maybe not. So we need to actually change our mind to think more about keywords um, than just asking a question, of course. So what exactly is a keyword, okay? Keywords, uh, phrases, uh, Google's kind of even a verb, okay? I Googled it, someone will say. And a lot of times someone will give you information and you're like, well, where am I supposed to find that? And you go, ah, oh, just Google it, okay? Type in the right name, type in the right uh, keywords, and it should pull up, okay? Uh, here's a quote from John Wiley, the lead designer of Google Search. He actually says, every day of daily searches, the questions people ask Google have never been asked before. 15% of searches on Google have never been done before. All right, so let's go ahead and start talking about our search. And of course, I recommend, and you can do this on your a tablet device or phone or something. Of course, if you exit YouTube, um, you you'll, won't hear me anymore, so it's probably best to have it on a separate device so if you're gonna kind of follow along, okay? So first, let's start by going to google.com, okay? And we're gonna click in our search box, and we're actually gonna type in Columbia County Library. So we're gonna use that as our main search. Uh, a lot of times I'll get asked, what is I'm feeling lucky? I'm feeling lucky mostly is whatever Google thinks is the top answer to whatever keyword you type in. That's kind of the website it takes you to, okay? So I count it, I'm feeling lucky is kind of their, their fun thing to do, but do you realize you don't, of course, have to do that? Um, but, you know, it's kind of a Google thing. Okay, so let's go ahead Then I'm actually going to use my Firefox. And let's go ahead and pull up Google. <laughs> and I will actually show you an add on. An add on that I use, and I'll show that in just a second. But add on I'd use that I actually show a little bit of a preview um, on there of the website before you click on it. So I actually do recommend it, um, but I'll show that to you. All right, so we've got our keywords. What are we going to search for? Columbia County Library. And as we type, you'll actually see that it will give suggestions on what other people basically search for, keywords people typed in. And most of the time, you learn, Google should, may know where you are located. I'll say may know. So here we are. Here's our search results, and I'm actually going to zoom in a little bit more. I'm trying to, I'm going to try to make the text as large as I can, even if I have to uh, chop off the side a little bit, okay? So basically we're just searching for our main branch library, okay? What actually do we see in our search results? Now, the interesting part was, first we see where it says our Google categories, okay? Now, these will be in different order you may not notice what order these are in to begin with. You used to, they were kind of stagnant. They kind of stayed still. But now, kind of based on our search, these will actually change. And if you do want to see other ones, if you click more, you'll see others. Uh, main categories like videos is, is blocked and like face, the book one is blocked. 
Okay. So if I come up here, let's see our categories. And the first thing we see is we first see our, here's our blue. Now, it's interesting things because it looks like since the last time I taught this class, they've actually updated, okay, they've actually updated the way that it looks. So the actual search results at the bottom, okay, is actually now showing on top. Interesting, interesting. So if we look at that on our side here, we can actually see, and it pops up, it shows the address at the top. We actually have in blue what we can click on, and of course I can't point to it, but in the bottom left, anytime before we click on something, and this is good for uh, internet security and stuff, if you hover over a link in the bottom left, it'll show you where it's gonna take you before you click it. Okay, on a touch device, touch screen device, you don't really get this. Um, so just realize that you do have this one more layer of security if you're using just, you know, a computer with a mouse, Mac, Chromebook, or something like that. Surfing the internet, using a mouse, you can hover over your link in the bottom left, which is down here, which it disappears when I put my mouse there. It actually shows the address it's going to take you to. Okay, now let me show you uh, one more thing. So it says gchrl.org, it comes up, shows that, and it also is talking about some photos here on the right side, okay? Now, if I, I'm gonna show you one extra thing that I actually have turned on most of the time. This kind of bleeds into our uh, class about our browsers and our internet um, safety, which we actually have coming up. If I go to add-ons, one of the add-ons I really recommend, I'm not actually sure if it's available on the other ones, but it's called Search Preview, and if I turn that on, when I go back and if I do a refresh, it actually gives a little picture of a preview, okay, of that website, okay? So just realize that you can put a little add-on and before you click on a website, it actually will give a nice little preview of it, okay? So I'm actually gonna turn that off, but it is really nice. I do recommend that little add-on. So add-ons can actually, um, you know, kind of make your experience a little bit better, and I talk about more of that in our browser and add-on class, okay? Okay, so if I go down to the bottom here and I keep scrolling, We'll actually see this big Google going on, don't we? Now, the big thing about the big Google is that if I actually click next, it'll take me to the next page of search results. Now, they actually say, statistically speaking, that most people only go to the first or second page, okay? So the first or second page of search results, and they'll click a bunch, go back, not find what they're looking for, and then they go, oh no, I can't find it, I give up. Okay, well I don't want that to be you. I want you to realize that if I do better on my keywords, if I add more keywords, if I get more specific, and that's what this class is, um, half of the class is really about doing our better searching. Um, there you go, and then it even will show you kind of your location, so kind of based on my location, it's giving me the different results as well, okay? So, if we go back to our handout here, Realize we'll see some things that are Google embedded, all right? And if we scroll down, let's talk about different ways and things that we can search for. So this is a part of our class talking about doing a better search, okay? All right, so let's talk about our first three uh, keywords that we're gonna kinda add to to try to kinda get the idea that we can add more words to something. and give get a better search result okay so if I start out by typing in ice cream okay so anytime I can go up here do backspace hit enter and then it's searching up oh it's telling me locations of ice cream places nearby it's telling me the Wikipedia 
Answer by Ice Cream, New York Times, Ice Cream, Homemade Ice Cream, All Recipes. Ooh, how bad is ice cream to your health? This is people also asked. I can click that, get a little preview. Or I can click the word too, and it'll do it. It'll show me videos about making ice cream. So this is kind of in the everything category. Images, Ben and Jerry's, all kinds of stuff. And then it actually adds, gives more suggestions about keywords. So all of this is helping us to try to find a better answer. So Google is trying to give us ideas ice cream game I don't I don't know about ice cream game that sounds interesting but none of that is exactly what I'm looking for so I'm gonna go back oh, I gotta minimize that I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna add the word recipe okay and as I type it in it's immediately finishing it and I can click it okay recipe all right i only ice cream recipe you'll ever need by the new york times it says barefeetinthekitchen.com taste of home all recipes there you go videos and if i hover you have a, give a little bit of a preview which can be helpful mm, ice cream in five minutes what all right, so oh, this is one that uh, interesting. I'll have to check that out. All right, so I'm gonna go back. <laughs> I got interested in it. How about that? But I'm specifically, I'm in Georgia, so I want to try some peach ice cream, don't I? Okay, so let's try that. Let me add the word peach. And there we go, old fashioned peach ice cream peach ice cream now I'm getting specifically what I want so again get more specific about what you're thinking you're searching for now could I have just added ice cream peach yes but it would still be showing me maybe a local place to go buy it maybe even it would pop up like with Walmart or, or Kroger or someplace like that or uh, uh, you know I'm specifically looking for recipe and I'm looking for peach okay so there's our first example and our big one is supposed to be thinking about hey how can I be more specific and more keywords think about is there a different way to say the same thing and you'll hear me say that a lot okay so let's go ahead and let's talk about travel okay I know we're not talking about travel right now, but we're talking about travel maybe a year or two from now. Ooh, all the traveling we're going to be doing, right? Okay, all the places you'll go, all the things you will see. So let's talk about being more specific. So if I just go here and I go to my search and I just typed in, let's say a country, I'm going to do England. You can do Australia or some other country, any other country you can think of. So if I just type in a country, I'm getting um, Wikipedia. I'm getting over here where it's talking about England. All right, not exactly what I'm looking for. I'm talking more about ideas of travel. Okay, visiting England, that might be good. Wikitravel.edu, wiki I mean dot, um, .org. Do, re re do remember if it's a wiki, that is a user submitted information site so just be aware of that lonely planet all kinds of stuff map but let me see I want to be more specific because I just want to get rid of this stuff that's giving me information about the country I just want to know about traveling there so if I type in the word travel boom immediately I'm getting popular destinations now do you see the big difference in that so now it's talking about places to visit, not just a general, um, you know, definition. There's Mr. Rick Steves showing up there. Visit Britain, and now all my stuff is mostly about travel, of course. So just a little bit. Here's videos. And we actually do have a YouTube uh, class talking about making YouTube videos and trying to become popular. And if you do travel somewhere, even locally, 
um, maybe even make some videos post them on YouTube and you know see what kind of response you get okay so just adding one keyword like travel can greatly change what our search results are now another thing is to go in here and actually use something like a phrase like I have a dream quote unquote you can search for uh, quotes to be or not to be now Martin Luther King speech will probably come right up but I'm just using that as an example of course comes right up there's a full video okay here's a reference site now look they've already they have put it in quotes because it is a quote so if we do put it in quotes that means it can't break it up in any way and it'll stay as a, a quoted phrase okay so all our search results oh I totally typed it wrong sorry <laughs> It was interesting because that was like you pulled up some band called I Have Have. Anyway, so pulls up. Look over here on the. Oh, look, that's completely different because it's spelled right now. <laughs> anyway, so it has this whole thing section over here. Summary that Google has. Quotes. There's a book. There's a, I don't know what reviews would be. Oh, historical content teaching plan okay wow we've gotten a lot of great information here just by putting it in quotes if I didn't if I didn't do the quotes we get the same thing let's see no oh, I do okay as long as I spelled it right okay so let's do another famous quote to be or not to be to be or not to be oh it has it views it views it as a poem that's interesting so if I put it in quotes this is really great for names as well poetry foundation interesting view it on poetry here's a clip from Hamlet movie other readings Tells exactly where it's from. Talks about what book it is. It's from Hamlet. I'm not sure why it's showing the other books, but anyway. Translation, Shakespeare, quotes, all these kind of great stuff down there giving us more information. All right, now let's talk about using our minus sign. Okay, so if I go and I change it to salsa. Now, what kind of salsa am I actually looking for? Here's telling me about restaurants. This is telling me about a dance place for salsa, salsa restaurant, salsa recipes. I don't know why that's popping up. Salsa recipes come down here, cooking classes, simply, all kinds of stuff. So, lots of salsa recipes. It may already assume I'm looking for salsa recipes instead of dancing. But it's still listed dancing as one of the things. So let's talk about our minus sign. So if I do minus dance, that will subtract any of the search results that I'm searching for. It will not have dancing involved in any way. Okay. Now what could you do? You could add the word recipe, kind of like we showed before, or Let's say I want to get rid of, um, and I'll get, I'll put in food. So minus food. Eh, it kind of worked. Okay, so we're seeing videos about, about dancing. Let's see, dancing videos. Okay, so now it's showing me more ballroom stuff, movies, all kinds of stuff. Now I could have added just the word, you know, dance to it and we should get yeah there's similar results see but still thinking about different ways to do the same thing okay be specific well be general get more specific 
uh, think about it that way, okay? All right, so we can also do websites as well. If you, let's say you don't want wikipedia.org, you could do minus. The big thing with the minus sign is to make sure that there's a space here, no space here, you know, space here, no space here, so it knows it's a minus sign. Now, this is something that's a little bit more, um, how would you say this? Mm. It's a little bit more something you may not really use that much, but just to kind of know that it's there. So let's say that you are looking for something, you don't know the exact phrasing. Now, Google does have a great spell check, but mostly it has a fantastic phrase spell check. So uh, the, I remember in class one time, um, it was around Christmas time, and someone says, well, I'd really like to know the words to uh, like a German uh, song, Good King Whistleslauf. And I was like, I have no idea how to spell Whistleslauf. And so we just kind of typed in Good King, and I just kind of guessed the best I could, and it popped right up because Google not only was was uh, doing a spell check versus on each word, but it was also doing a spell check on the entire phrase that had been put in. Word, Microsoft Word basically does a one word spell check, and if you do use the Google, maybe even for a spell checker, you can actually check a whole phrase at a time. So this is an asterisk, it's a placeholder. So the idea is that I'm not sure what the words are, but if I put an asterisk here, asterisk here, asterisk here, it actually will fill in the blanks and try to find uh, what exactly am I missing, okay? So let's type that in. I'm just copy, I'm gonna cheat, I'm gonna copy paste it. So a blank blank is a blank earned. Hmm. A blank blank is a blank earned. Can you guess what it is? Can you guess what it is? What do you think it is? And let's see. All right, so, oh, I do have to hit enter. <laughs> it pops up and because the asterisk is uh, whatever, it came up with the word penny saved. It's a penny earned and that is what I was looking for. It was a blank blank is a blank earned, okay? Penny, there you go. Jan, that's perfectly right. Jan, you get a gold star. Gold star for Jan. <laughs> Do you like that? It's a little different than uh, the way we reply stuff on our former uh, Facebook channel. Because usually in Facebook I can do likes. So I'm still trying to learn this. Hopefully everybody can see that. Uh, so there you go. Gold star, which is kind of like a like button. Okay, so absolutely right. We have our, our blank blank gold star again. This is Google School, so you may never use some of these, but mainly I want you to go away from here um, thinking about uh, searching things a new way. Now, this is excellent here, and I'm going to copy, whoop, I'm actually going to copy paste, no, man, okay, come on thing, there you go, copy, copy, still messing up on me, there you go. So copy, we'll get up here and we'll paste it in there. So one of the things you can do is, and I've actually had this issue, if you have a website you like to go to, but you can't find the information on the website, maybe it's a blog. I remember a blog many years ago, it was like a tech blog, and they would post stuff and literally three days later, you could not find what they posted just a few days ago. <laughs> Even if you went back to previous pages, it was very strange. And their search did not pull up stuff. It was very, very non-keyword friendly. So one of the things is if Google has added, add okay, okay, good. <laughs> no problem, Jan, glad you're here. So the, uh, the main thing is you can actually tell uh, Google to search other websites specifically, okay? By using this, it just says site colon uh, CNET, uh, like CNN.com or something, so electric car. The interesting thing about this is not only will we see, 
We should see it. Yeah, okay. A lot of the time we'll actually see another one where it'll like search money.cnn as well. I believe it's doing that, but used to it was a little bit more prevalent. It may just be telling me it is cnn.com. This will actually give you a little bit of information too here. Must include site. There you go. So we actually can tell it to search certain websites for us. Now, if you want more information past those search tips, um, you can actually go here and do Google guide.com uh, cheat sheet okay and again this is in the handout I posted now let's do like an internet she can seek she can find <laughs> internet seek and find okay so go ahead and let's start this so what's number one on our sheet let's search for your name now if you don't want to search for your name then search for uh, John or Jan Smith and I'll do a quick search for myself now the reason I, I do this is because um, you will meet people you'll do business with people um, even dating or anything like that so we're trying to uh, establish a new relationship um, they may actually do a search for somebody in Google and if you did it for yourself, and it's not really in control you can have over this, but do realize that may ha may have done that for you, and it may not be the same person. So this actually pulls up, and it's like a news story. Apparently, myname.com is a real estate auction site. Apparently, they sell rugs as well now. Interesting. There's a Twitter handle, a story. Let's see, Wikipedia, all that stuff. Guess what? None of that is me. So do you realize that if you are searching for somebody else, you may run into the part where it may not be you at all, okay? It may just be someone typed in. So do kind of know that. Um, so if someone did do a search, maybe they don't know you that well, maybe they kind of accidentally typed in your name in Google, it happens. But do you realize the same thing about you searching for someone searching for you could be the same results you find about someone else, okay? So it may not be them, and it may not be accurate either, okay? All right, so let's do what number two is. Let's see, can you tell me the answer? So what is R-O-F-L, okay? R-O-F-L, what does R-O-F-L mean? So if I go to my search, could ask, what does R-O-F-L mean? I could just type in R-O-F-L and let's see if we can find the answer. Now, let's say we were talking to someone, I mean, we were just texting back and forth and all of a sudden they threw out R-O-F-L and you went, I don't know what that means. Now. To be smart, if you're talking with someone that maybe does text a lot, it does happen, and they do throw out some of these words, you could very quickly do a Google search or trying to figure out what they're trying to say back. Maybe that'll make you look smarter, more um, tech savvy, uh, than basically going, what does that mean? They're like, oh, well, you don't know what that means, and there you go. So it means rolling in the floor, laughing, okay? All right, so let's go to our number three here. And this one is to kind of get us to think a little bit differently. Okay, so who was the 20th president of the United States and when and where was he born? Okay, now do you realize to think about this, one website might say born, another website might say birth, and another website might say DB, okay, or birth date. Uh, how can we search this? We might just ask Google who was the 20th president. You could go to a website and you know find a list of presidents, go through, find that, search for that person. But it's easiest to go ahead and find out who the person is. You may find out when they were born as well because a lot of the websites have that. So it's the 20th president. So let's go in. I might just type in 20th president
Oh, I completely spelled it wrong. Typing and not looking. There you go. Uh, James Garfield. I wonder if James Garfield had any kind of cat. What was the name of that cat? I wonder. Uh, so, did James Garfield have a cat named Garfield? I don't know. Might have to do some deeper research to find that out. So we, we know the person's name is James Garfield. Okay. If I scroll down here, it says, ooh, who was chosen to be president? Why was James Garfield killed? Ooh, Wikipedia is on here. Now remember, Wikipedia is a user submitted information site. So if you were basically doing something and you needed to have a reference, don't use Wikipedia because it, its information can be changed and it can be inaccurate. Okay. So if we do like whitehouse.gov, I'm going to click James Garfield, whitehouse.gov, we scroll down, and it hasn't really, okay, there you go, born, and it gives the year 1831. Now, it uses the term born, okay, so if I had typed in born, that website might have come up, come up. Now, if I had used the word birth, maybe didn't come up because they say born instead so do realize if you're not finding the search results that you're looking for think about is there another way to say the same thing okay and then do the do search change your search and go back and search again okay okay so let's go to our next part did you get that one hope so All right, so let's talk about a uh, pie recipe, okay? Now, this will be kind of similar to us searching for ingredients, okay? So what is the main ingredient in shoe fly pie? And extra, can you find a recipe? So let's look up. Shoe fly pie. Okay. Oh, well, our first question is what is shoe fly pie made of? Okay. Oh, it, the Wikipedia is over here on the right side giving lots of information, aren't they? It says it's a Pennsylvania Dutch recipe. On the left side here, it already, already has a button called recipes. That's awesome. Okay. So Google's trying to give us a little bit of a heads up here. Help us. There's even videos here. If I scroll down, uh, cooking, New York Times, all recipes on there, shoe fly pie, taste of home, okay. New York Times, my grandma's shoe fly pie recipe, homemade shoe fly pie, how to bake shoe fly pie, Wikipedia, spend with pennies, I don't know what that means. But we have all kinds of stuff, so I'm actually going to go back up here and I'm going to add the word recipe. All right, my grandmother's shoe fly pie. Do the all recipes one. And it pulls up, let's see, a cup of molasses, baking soda, all purpose flour, brown sugar, ooh, brown sugar, molasses. Sounds like a really sweet dish, doesn't it? It's actually not very sweet. Um, it's a traditional Pennsylvania Dutch recipe. It's very rarely you'll actually find this in certain places, but mostly it's like a, at a Pennsylvania Dutch restaurant. So it's an interesting name. Uh, it's mostly why I chose it because it's like a shoe fly, pie, shoe fly, shoe fly, get out of here. Um, recipe, and I really like the name of it. But there you go right there. Talks about all the main ingredients and stuff. Okay, so now let's talk about whose face is on the $10,000 bill, okay? Or note, and the interesting part about this is it kind of goes along with, um, I guess uh, people saying only famous people are on the um, dollar faces of dollar bills. Uh, kind of question, but 
or that people will say only presidents are on the dollar bills you're like no whose face is on the hundred dollar bill so let's find out who is on the ten thousand dollar bill so I'm gonna do I'm just gonna say ten thousand bill now that's not a fake bill there are you'll maybe if you do images you may pull up some fake um, dollar bills which is kind of funny bank rates talks about has pictures of different bills if I go here mm -hmm. talks about big bills the $500 bill different $500 bills reasons why they changed there's a thousand dollar bill five thousand dollar bill and then we are home to the ten thousand dollar bill okay so whose face is on the ten thousand dollar bill I don't know if we can read that that small but if we go down here it should actually pop up and tell us so did you find out who it is now his name isn't Salmon, <laughs> it's Salmon, okay? P. Chase, so does Chase, Chase kind of ring a bell? Mm, okay, so he was President Lincoln's Secretary of the Treasury for 1861 to 1864, just three years, and the, actually the $10,000 bill was basically a banknote, okay? So that they could actually sell um, trade money back and forth okay so some of these places will say it was never in circulation which is that's my understanding but it was really just a bill that the banks passed back and forth so they could loan each other money um, you know instead of gold I guess you could say uh, did he have anything to do with Chase Bank Chase credit cards supposedly not that was a, a decision to name those companies after him but they're not uh, connected in any way okay and I think they just probably just like the name Chase or something I'll have to look at their website to say why they did that okay so we find out Salmon P Chase his face is on the ten thousand dollar bill and he was a treasury secretary of treasury excuse me he was a treasury secretary of treasury Okay, so let's do one last search here. We'll start jumping into our other parts. So a big one here is information needed. Now this is what I call the breadcrumbs. And I'll kind of I'll kind of leave this to you doing the search uh, for yourself. The interesting thing about this one is is that not only will it lead you to a really neat video, um, but it will actually lead you to a very famous short-lived flight okay and it still is the largest wingspan plane uh, ever created okay so first we want to follow the breadcrumbs where we want to start with a black and white movie about airplanes made in 1930 and there's a few of them believe it or not and we want to find out who the director was and what did he do what was the director's name what was the movie name and then use that to find out uh, how what's his connection with the largest wingspan span plane uh, that was ever created okay there was only one made okay only one was built and I'll leave that to you okay so let's go ahead and let's go back to our Google we're gonna go up here and make changes in just a second Let's talk about some of our special keywords that we have. So Google can actually pop up a lot for us. And remember, this isn't just going to google.com. This is also the, the Google Voice app that you can have on your iPhone and your Android device as well, okay? So if you use these same keywords with the Google uh, app, it actually will work the same way as well. Add in specialty keywords. If it's songs to if it's lyrics to a song add the word lyrics in there okay uh, one that I'll use a lot instead of having to go to a specialty website just type in the zip code type in weather 
right in the Google search. And boom, it pops right up. And it's information given from weather.com. You can go there, but look, no advertisement. It's right there, pops right up, tells you what the, the weekly forecast will be. What is the weekly forecast? Um, our next one here is about our time zone. This is huge. Now, if you don't do searching this way, I've actually had it where I had someone that went out of the country trying to contact them at certain times or setting a time and day knowing when they would actually be, you know, awake. <laughs> Can be a little bit of a tricky issue when someone's out of the country, but you, instead of going to a website, which if you type, if you go to Google and you type in um, like time zone, they'll actually send you to websites that'll give you the time zone for different places, meaning how much you, what you should add, what you should subtract, how many hours, uh, stuff like that. But if I just type in the word time, so we'll kind of stick to our topic we were looking at earlier. So if I say England, time, hit enter, it'll pop up right there. I don't have to know um, exactly how many hours to minus, plus, any of that kind of stuff. And there it is right there, 840. So basically you can type in any country. Oh good, it pops up with a whole bunch of them. Here's Australia. How about uh, New Zealand? Here's New Zealand. There you go, 740 AM. And one of the things I really like about this too, is it will tell you what day of the week it is, okay? So if you actually did have a actual meeting time, you can actually uh, type this in and you'll make sure that it is the right day you're calling and all that, okay? It's right there. Okay, and it will give, give you the information here. So Georgia, um, uh, uh, blanking what it is, but the G Mountain Time, just add 12 hours it says okay so let's talk about define okay define a word again we're just kind of covering a lot of the things we may not realize Google can do so if I just say like dog and I say define hit enter it'll pop up right here let's see if we do dog there you go y'all should be able to hear that dog there you go Roof, roof. And of course, it comes down and shows us the full definition here. And if I go to the bottom here, there you go. It's from uh, Oxford Languages Dictionary. Okay. So you can actually go to a specific site. But again, I'm trying to make this quick, easy, and also it really makes that uh, Google Voice search. Uh, just one-stop shop app because you can do all the same things here that you can do there okay so let's talk about movies I know we're not doing big movie stuff right now <laughs> of course but in the future we will uh, be doing movie theaters and stuff so for even if I go up here and if I just type in the word movie it will actually start showing all kinds of different movies popular movies that are going on you can click there they're showing trailers new movie trailers but a big thing used to be you typed in movie and then you typed in like your zip code when we typed in our zip code it actually would pop up here yeah our library current library is closed but if it would usually pop up here tell us the time the showings in the movies right in the search I didn't have to go to any other thing I wouldn't have to go to Fandango or anything like that because it's all right there okay all right so here's a really big one talk about conversion this is one of those where there's different you may want to go hey I just want to know a simple conversion I don't want to have to download an app I don't want to have to go to some website I don't know if I actually just start asking Google now I wish there was a little bit better way that you could I could tell you how to get here. Basically, you just start asking Google um, equals this equals that. Uh, you know how many cups are in a quart? 
uh, basically you do that and it'll actually pull this up and then you can actually choose um, a whole bunch of stuff what is stones anyway what is a stone I know in uh, England they have a stone thing so one stone is 14 pounds it says now the other thing is just you can click here it'll do energy it'll also do mass time and there's your volume so if you are sitting around you need to know how many tablespoons so how many tablespoons are in a gallon let's see and a gallon Ooh. okay well no hang on how many table okay so I need how do I do this uh, da, 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 da. So basically if I say one gallon and yeah there you go how many tablespoons it's 307 tablespoons in a gallon okay did not know that I probably will not need to know that but there you go it pulls that up and it'll give you a whole bunch of conversion again right here on the website right there on the app too you don't have to go anyplace else now let's talk about some extra searching searches that we can do with our different categories we do kind of cover this in the general beginner internet class so I won't be covering a lot of this mostly just talking about a little bit of extra stuff that people do talk about um, want to know more information about okay and then we're going to get more into our Google photos and the other things that Google has to offer basically for free so basically when I'm doing a search and I'm searching for something let's say Columbia County Library we'll do that again Columbia County Library one of the things you can do is you can go over here to tools uh, not the settings but the tools and you can actually say what time now you can do past hour past 24 hours custom range past year this can be great let's say it's software um, maybe you know that something has just happened in the past 24 hours um, so that's the only website that you want to know about um, let's say a new version of software came out then you only want to search like past the last month um, for that software and also you can, can kind of control what you see as well this also bleeds into let's say the news so if I click news this is all from um, news organizations okay and if I go here click tools click new or recent then I can actually choose which news organizations and um, excuse me I can choose how recent I want the the news articles to be okay so that's what's really good that's what's really great about using the search for news map directions and shopping as well okay so let's say we were looking for let's say an ice cream maker and go back to all right now it's searching everything it's seeing Amazon good housekeeping products are in there but I want to be real specific I want to see shopping there's my shopping like I said those categories do move around what's the big benefit of Google shopping we do get into this more about our internet shopping and digital couponing class but mainly just realize that if you do click the shopping button this is kind of equal to doing the price grabber uh, website and it can connect up I say it can I uh, show you here so it can connect up with websites like Walmart or any of those and maybe even tell you if it's locally available as well I will tell you this is a fantastic ice cream machine um, right here it really is so if I click it yes I have some um, blocker ad blocker stuff so I get a little bit extra clicking but it pops up one of those where you actually freeze the container but let me tell you it does work very well um, it has tweets freeze over overnight and then in about 20 minutes you'll have your ice cream okay okay so that's one website it's listing and if I go to here here's most popular 
Ooh, 99. So it, if that's the same model, looks like the Coles might be cheaper. Here's the old one. Let's see, Coles product reviews, compare prices. Okay, let's do compare. This will pop up and it shows a whole bunch of other places, crate and barrel, different places. Kind of Coles looks like it's kind of the one of the cheaper ones. Oh, uh, this one's a place here. So one good thing about this in general is that Google, you can actually see um, reviews for the certain websites too. Not all of them will actually have the reviews. I don't see any reviews on this one. Now, of course, there's Wayfair and some other mainly um, known companies, so that's really not an issue. But what is this one? And it talks about shipping and pricing as well. Okay. Just kind of give you some ideas. So, kind of our big thing going on here about shopping is not only can you search one website, but you can actually search more than one for the same item or maybe even the same model number. Okay, so that's our shopping. Um, I won't go into the videos too much. You basically just click video. Do you realize that Google has um, more than one video site? They actually do own. Uh, YouTube, which we're using right now, of course, but they actually have their own video service as well. So sometimes if you search just general Google search you videos, it'll actually search another website they have and also other video websites and not just YouTube. Okay. So for more information about that, you can go down there. And let's go ahead and talk about our next section here, which is our Google Books. Okay. Now first I'm going to give you the direct address to go to these places and I'll do a little bit of demonstration here but we're also going to talk about how you can get to all the services on Google. It's not the easiest uh, thing to do but I'm actually going to show you how to get there. Okay, So we're going to talk about Google Books, Google Photos um, and also everything Google and we'll talk about some 3D stuff with goggles and a lot of fun stuff like that stuff too. So. If you've got little bits at home, want to try something different, um, and still want it to be educational, we'll, we'll talk about that. So what exactly is Google Books? Now in our, our, our library resources and apps class, we actually have ways that you know, it talks about getting free eBooks, getting free um, magazines, stuff like that. This is another resource we have. Um, so if something's not on there, it might be here. But do realize there's lots of free books and also Google will sell them to you too. And there are some books that are in public domain and then like Alice in Wonderland that you can just click and download. But then some folks will actually kind of do like a remix with it and then they'll sell it. So just be aware if you know it's, an, it's a non-copywritten book anymore, you may actually be able to find it on there, you know, for free, of course. All right, so we go to googlebooks.google.com and I'm going to type in Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland. So we actually get here. If it says there's a preview, one good thing about this is because they do, of course, sell ebooks through Google and the Google Play Ad Store. It's how you can read it on your devices. Um, you can actually, okay, yeah, so you can have it on there. Shoot, I forgot what I was going to talk about. Um, okay, so you're reading the book, you can view it online. I'll, oh, also, if it is a book that you can buy, a lot of the times you can get a nice preview of the book, maybe the first chapter, and then you can actually go in there and decide if it's a book you do want to purchase or not. Now, we have our preview, okay? So in 2009, this person came in and changed it a little bit. So they're selling it. That's why that's a preview. Here's one that's a read. So that means I can read it. Here's made it into like a graphic novel, it looks like. Yeah, preview, here's a read. And if I go down far enough here, here's Alice in Wonderland's Disneyland version, or Disney version, I should say. But I'm going to go back to where it says read. So if I click read, so this means it's one of those that's non-copywritten anymore. 
and I can actually scroll right through it and read the book okay now one big thing to do okay hold on I want to exit this part thank you okay so one big thing to do here is that we have our download as a PDF the full thing um, you know non copyright version of these here's the overview of it you can actually add it if you're logged in you can add it to your library so you can see it on other devices and it'll kind of sync them excuse me sync them together as well and there also is a where's my search one thing we can always count that Google may move things around a little bit but anyway there is a search for in the book okay so I'm not sure where I maybe it's here yeah there it is so if I actually go up here and type in the word cat it actually will search the book just like um, you know so if it was a the real book sitting in front of me that version of it I could actually turn to this page page 90 and there's your cat and if I click it it'll show me the full text okay and the wonderful part reason I, I choose this because I know that the this one has great you know illustrations on it I almost said great graphics it has great graphics that's true but they're really illustrations there the mad patter uh, mad hatter tea party and there you go so that's basically just kind of a brief overview of Google Books and a lot of folks will ask me where's the free books and I go there there you just have to search usually you can tell because it'll say preview versus read okay okay any questions about that all right so let's talk about our Google Drive and Google Docs so tomorrow we'll be doing our uh, Google today's Google school and tomorrow is our suite thank you it's our Google suite class okay so definitely come join me for that I'm gonna go in a little bit of brief overview here and then we're gonna delve into that a little more so if I my thing duplicate there you go okay. so if I grab this yank it over here there you go so this is kind of our Google Drive okay what's available with our Google Drive well the big benefits is that it's online okay it's free does everybody like free I'm just checking it's online there's a word processing app there's a spreadsheet there's presentations like PowerPoint and we're going to talk about those three tomorrow okay but what about the Google Docs or Google Drive part well you can actually upload files okay um, you can upload any files you want to depending on your hard drive space um, Google only gives us a certain amount that's free okay they do have different plans that you can pay for if you want more space than that I just use the free one a lot of businesses um, we'll use this and I'll tell a little bit more about that in just a second so big thing is you can actually do work on documents on your computer like Microsoft Word Excel PowerPoint and then actually upload them to Google Docs or vice versa save stuff um, to that um, version on your computer and then you can open it up with Word and edit it there so it's kinda lets it kinda live going back and forth okay if that makes sense so basically this is my Google Drive so this is talking about all the files I've actually uploaded okay it says I actually have this is actually our library version so we have 30 gigs the free version actually gives you 15 free now how do I actually access the Google suite if I click new over here then it'll show me if I click more it'll show me more too it'll show Google Docs which is like Word sheets which is like Excel and slides like is like PowerPoint okay now I'll go ahead and click Google Docs you will quickly see that it resembles Word a lot and there's actually some um, people that just have a Chromebook so what exactly is a Chromebook Chromebook basically is having the Google 
uh, Chrome browser, but as a full operating system. So you're using apps that way. You, of course, can surf the internet just like we've been doing and also access this as well, okay? There's a lot of free, uh, cheap Chromebooks that are kind of like small laptops and it's become very popular. The only negative thing about that, of course, is then you can't run Windows software. It's not a Mac, so you can't run Mac software. And if you did want to access these features, you can actually do it in the web browser or you can do it using the Google Chromebook, I mean, excuse me, the Google Chrome browser, okay? So it kind of depends on how you work. And Google has even um, made a deal with a lot of schools. So a lot of younger kids are coming along and they may not really know much about a Mac, may or may not know much about a Windows 10 computer because their main computer may actually be a Google Chromebook, okay, from their school or that's what their, their family bought, okay. So up here we can actually save our document, we give it a name, and if we actually wanted to download it, we can go here and you see we can save it as a Microsoft Word document, okay. So it allows it to uh, live online or live on your computer, save it to your hard drive. And uh, Chromebooks really want to be connected to the internet all the time, but there are ways you can just download and work offline as well. And we'll talk more about this tomorrow in the Google Suite class. Why would someone really like this? The big thing is the share button. I can actually work on a document, a PowerPoint presentation, Excel, maybe I'm working on a budget, and I can share it with others we're all working online so I can actually see who changed what and instead of sending files back and forth or of course we're all kind of staying home and safe and everything right now is a great way to learn about this because um, you can work on one document and it be on the cloud and instead of emailing or changing or sending files back and forth um, you know it's been when it's been updated or the latest version okay great to work with teams and it actually will show um, who changed what in the document too, okay? So like I said, tomorrow we'll do a more in-depth about that. This is just kind of an overview. Um, but again, this is one of those things that's free with, um, you know, your, your free Gmail account, okay? Any questions about that? <laughs> Okay, so let's talk about our Google Photos a little bit. So let me pull, give me a second to pull that up. Now this, we actually go into more in depth detail in our camera two class. It's loading, so give me just a minute. It's still loading. <laughs> so hold on. Hold on a minute. Aha. There, anyway, okay. So let me show you. So this is Google Photos. The big thing about this is uh, basically having the app on your phone. So it'll upload to the cloud. So you install the, the, the app on your device, usually our cell phones, of course, and basically you turn it on and the, the default settings are you connect your phone or device to Wi-Fi, okay? And then it will actually back up your pictures and sync them uh, to the cloud, okay? The high quality is usually what we have it set to, which works great. Um, and if you have it set to that, which is set to that by default, it's actually free unlimited storage, okay? So you can't beat free unlimited storage now, can we? The great part about this is if let's say your cell phone is running out of space, um, you can actually go to this app, the settings in this app, and it'll say, do you need to free up space? And you say yes, and it will actually remove from your cell phone all the pictures and videos that it already backed up to the cloud, okay? So it's not you guessing what you backed up to the cloud, it's actually you, uh, it's actually the program saying, this is all the, pro the files I backed up, so I'm gonna delete those from your device, and they're all safely backed up to the cloud, okay? 
this is a e very very easy way to share pictures you back it up and instead of emailing something or even texting stuff um, our phones can actually get very full if we're texting using the, just the, the iMessenger that comes with iPhone or the Android device if we're not using something like like um, snapchat we're not using something like the the Facebook Messenger our phones can actually fill up because it'll try to save all that stuff um, so uh, one thing you can do is instead of actually seeing a picture you send the link of the of the picture and then it's not taking up space on your device or the other people's device either because they just tap it and they look at it it also has a photo assistant that'll uh, talk about a whole bunch of um, stuff and suggest uh, ideas uh, to do with your pictures okay and I'm gonna show you a quick video um, as well but let me show you the Google Photos and you can do a little bit of basic editing so these are some pictures I took um, outside but the really cool part about it is if I go over here and hover I could actually scroll all the way back and have all my pictures in the past um, uh, at any time and like I said having your phone this on your phone you could actually pull this up at any time and be like uh, well look hey do you want to know about a trip or do you want to see a, something happen remember the date uh, some of these things can be GPS location because you're taking a picture from your cell phone so if you said the beach or something like that you could actually type it in here and it'll actually will search okay uh, also if you could click you can click the picture and you can do a little bit of basic editing with them we go into that more into the camera class we'll be doing the the camera class again next month so keep an eye out for that some basic editing and let me go back and sharing is a big one so I'll kind of explain sharing so basically I can even share one two a hundred you know a thousand pictures if I wanted to and the really good part about it is I can actually go to my sharing app and then I can actually turn sharing off if I want to so basically it sends someone just a link just a little link uh, to all the pictures they can view all the pictures and when I decide I don't want them to view the pictures anymore I can actually turn the sharing button off now of course could they have taken screenshots or downloaded the video sure pictures sure sure they can anything on a computer screen can be captured okay so there you go right there you can hand upload stuff or you can use use the app and do it automatically there is also a um, show you Where is it on here? <laughs> this is Google, so they do tend to kind of move stuff around. Anyway, there is a. Well, shoot, it's not showing me, but I'll talk about something else. Anyway, there actually is an app that you can download to your uh, PC or Mac, and it'll back up pictures that are already on your computer as well to this cloud service. So the big key note of backing up stuff, keeping it safe is, if it's important enough, have it in two places. Have it on your computer, have it on the cloud, have it on an external hard drive, have it on your computer, have it on your phone, have it backed up, okay? So that's really our big uh, takeaway about backing stuff up is have it in two places. Okay, now let's go ahead and let's talk about our photo scan app. And I'm very happy to, sh to actually say that they actually have uh, fixed the video. Last night, let for, for about six months for some reason, the video wasn't available. But this is a great app. It's free from Google. It's called PhotoScan. Okay. And basically what it does is it's made for you to capture old photos very quickly. And the video explains it really easily. And it will make it makes it very easy to back stuff up to our Google Cloud too. Okay. So I'm going to play this and I will mute myself. Once upon a time, before there were smartphones, people took real photos printed on actual paper. Photos of siblings, of moms and dads, of birthday parties, of mullets, of grandma playing with dirt. Photos of the people that haunt your house and selfies before they were called selfies. These fragile pieces of paper are your memories. They're your family. They're your history. They're your regrets. 
So it's a good thing all those precious memories are safely backed up and perfectly organized in a nope. They're in a box in the attic, which is like the 87th best place they could be. <laughs> get, get. Maybe it's time to get out the gigantic flathead scanner, find the right cord, download the driver, and bam. Photo save forever. And bam. Wouldn't it be great if there was like a technology that was kind of like a mini scanner, like a handheld? Oh, hello. With the photo scan app, just hold your phone over any printed photo and go boop, 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 done. And you've got a high-res digital copy of the original without any glare. And it's not just a photo of a photo, because that looks like this. And if you have Google Photos, all your photos will be organized by face or place. It took you four and a half hours to get ready for this photo. The least you can do is spend a few seconds to scan it forever. Photos from the past, meet scanner from the future. Photoscan by Google Photos. <laughs> it's a great app. The interesting thing is there's actually an Australian version of that video and they talk about uh, uh, the wallaby in the, um, in the roof. <laughs> So instead of a, a raccoon, it is. So here's kind of a example. So if you're using your normal phone to take a picture of an older picture, you'll get a lot of glare, even if it's behind glass. But with the photo scan app, it actually removes that because you're actually taking sections, moving the phone around. It takes four pictures and it merges them together. So now it's just one picture without the glare. Now, is it as great as a uh, greater quality as using a big flatbed scanner. No, it's not. But is it good enough to look at, share, you know, throwback Thursday? There you go. Surprise some family members with some old pictures. Absolutely. You got the pictures in the box. Pull them out. Do this. It'll be very quick. And then you'll have the pictures backed up as well. The only negative thing that I have going on with uh, that in general is because Google Photos wants to organize the pictures based on time and it it basically by default sets up the time when you scan the pictures so as far as having it on the timeline properly you'll have to figure out um, how the um, when the pictures were originally taken and then set up the time uh, then which can be a little tricky but anyway it's a great app to use a uh, big recommendation and it's completely free from Google and not a lot of people know about it Okay, so any questions about that? All right, so let's keep going. Now I'll briefly cover Google Scholar. We actually in the library resources class, of course, talk about uh, Galileo. This is kind of Google's version of Galileo. You can look up articles. Um, information on here. There's a lot of free stuff on here. I'll look up how about dog. So you can actually uh, click there, find it information, full uh, articles. You know, of course, this is stuff that may not be included in the main Google search, but going to Scholar separately. And some of these do cost. But if you were working on an important, uh, you know, project or something that may be part of your budget and that's your plan is to use certain things as a reference okay okay so peer-reviewed papers that's the big thing and of course uh, it's not Wikipedia <laughs> so these are very important peer-reviewed papers alright now let's talk about a fun one here Again, I'm just showing you the exact addresses, okay? And then we'll actually, uh, I'll, I'll pull it up and we'll get to see a whole bunch of stuff. We'll get to play around with a little bit of stuff too. So what is Google Translate? Now this is a fantastic app mostly is what you'll want to use it for. And I'll play around with it in just a second. Um, one of the big things is that basically you can do conversations with it. Now, what are the limitations? Uh, you may have to pre-download some of these languages for offline mode. And 
the voice to text will not be available in offline mode so if you're in a bad let's say area that doesn't have good cell phone but do realize that um, typing in offline mode works and it actually has a mode where you can scan signs and it'll actually do live translate let's say a menu in a restaurant uh, it would be a great benefit to this and uh, that mode is available if you have that language download pre-downloaded okay and all this is free okay so go ahead hey I'm back <laughs> so let's show this So let's say we want to do Spanish. So basically here's the app and it pops up here and it looks a little transparent. Oh my, my head's looking transparent. Okay. My lighting did not help on that. Okay. So here's really the big thing. And this is kind of this part. You put it in this mode here and you can basically have a conversation. So I'm going to have it um, English to Spanish. And hopefully I'll have it next to the microphone up. Hello, how are you? Hola, como estas? So if I do conversation mode, hope you're having a great day. And then basically the other person would do Spanish back and it would translate it back too. Hola, como esta? Hello, how are you? So basically, and if you have the the that language downloaded, it actually works in offline mode. Okay. Now the video part and <laughs> okay, so I'll play around with this here. If I do the camera part, okay, so hopefully I can show this. So here's something in English. I know it's just putting it in. A little translucent there we go there's a lighting lighting is changing for us so if you see that's in English and I just did a live and it should change in just a second hopefully if I block it out a little bit there you go so now it's in Spanish so that is live and like I said that actually does work in offline mode so if you're not connected to the internet it actually will work that way but I've actually had family that went out of the country and a lot of folks basically were uh, popping up and using this and walking up and, and just basically people would hand them their phones and say, you know, Google Translate and then they would do translation back and forth, okay? Do translation back and forth. Ooh, I heard myself talking. Okay, so let me disappear. So basically that's Google Translate. It's a fantastic thing to use, completely free. Talking about our traveling and stuff. Future traveling. All right, now let's talk about other services as well. And the easiest way to go is basically is to do a bang hey, come on thing sometimes my right click copy doesn't want to work so basically if I go to the web browser and I click more if I click the little the little dots here I click even more it actually will take me to a big page that will include a lot of things and we're going to talk about those things okay Easiest way to go is about.google forward slash products. This address here. 
and then if I scroll down it'll actually start going down here oh they're adding a new thing shopping list okay interesting so oh they they're always adding something new here so here's education awesome but this actually goes through and shows you everything that Google has that's available okay so here's our normal search okay here's translate here's the Chrome browser here's our maps lens is a newer thing that they're working with you can actually access lens lenses through the, the search See if there's a video here. Anyway, it'll kind of guess what things are in the real world. Okay. Uh, they have a music service now. Of course, there's YouTube as well. YouTube app. There's the Pixel Books. There's the Chromebooks. And here's their voice search. Okay. Android devices, car devices as well. And there's information about our Chromebooks. There's Gmail, Messages, and here's the Google Duo that somebody asked about earlier. So Google, oh man. Okay, I just can't click on it. Okay, it's actually gonna send me there. I do know there's a bigger list here at the bottom. So it's just kind of giving us a big overview. Here's our Google Photos we talked about. One good thing about having the Gmail app on your phone is actually will back up your contacts and the calendar. This is Keeps, this is a newer I don't know if I like it dimming the picture when I hover over it. Anyway, um, this is Keeps. This is a newer program. It's a lot like the, let me see if I can show, oh yeah, there we go. It's a lot like the uh, Microsoft OneNote. So if you use that a lot, this is kind of like that. And you basically set up, you can set up checklists and you label them. And it's very easy to find doing voice searches So it's kind of keeping lists, checklists. You can send it to other friends and family. I've used it recently to keep some recipes. So you can use it to do pictures. So maybe there's stuff that you take pictures with your phone, but you want it to be a little bit more organized. Uh, try the Keeps app. Uh, it's very fun. See, stuff like that. Okay, show the, okay. I guess it's the way their animation works. Oh, there you go. Choose the color of it, and there you go. And this is the Google Docs we talked about. We'll talk about that more tomorrow in Sheets. This is all business stuff. If you want to advertise on Google, post, a Google, uh, post information about a business on there. And if we go down to here where it says all products, this will actually break down everything into its own little um, you know, icon that we can click on. Now, Google Calendar, and hopefully I'll show a little bit of overview on that. Um, most of our devices have the calendar on them. One of the great part about the Google Calendar is we can actually sync it across more than one device. This is the new Google Calendar. It looks like this, and this, and this. Hey guys, it can take this, this, and this, and put it all here automatically it helps you do this so you can go there with him and him and her to see this guy it works here here and here so you can do this that and the other thing whatever the other thing is pickles that's kind of fun but yeah, it's just, it's just a great way to do a calendar. It's very visual. And of course, it makes it interesting because you can, of course, invite friends 
or family member, at least just let them know that you have, let's say, an appointment at a, a certain time or whatever. Okay. And that's Google Calendar. Uh, this is something called Google Cardboard. Okay. Now, the way the Google Cardboard works is. They have a lot of these at the stores to go to and basically you put a cell phone in there and it'll have like two lenses and this is the Google one so they've tried to make it as cheaply as possible but there's all kinds of different apps that come with it or you can get for free as well. Um, one really fun thing is that you can actually do a uh, YouTube 360 and allow you to see the videos and because of the cell phone you know has the it has the motion uh, trackers on there. You can actually track your head movement, looking around, watching a video. Kind of like that. There's the cardboard app that has games and stuff. Here's kind of like the 360 channel. So it has its own uh, section. Let's see here. Wow, it's flying. Skydiving, walk around with penguins. Let's see. Let's walk around with penguins for a minute. By National Geographic. So, one of the big things is you can use this on the desktop. Kind of imagine using this with the headset. Like you said, they have whole uh, different sections and groups to kind of street view is even available to do that, but you can access it as well um, to look it around that way, uh, like I just demonstrated. So it's kind of Google Cardboard. So sometimes you'll see these uh, headsets really cheap, and of course, Google sells ones for as cheap as, as $15, but they have different ones available as well. A lot of the times you'll see these like in a Walmart or somewhere by different stores. And let me show you. Well, shoot, they used to have a whole section here that talked about the other companies. Anyway, so that's one of the really neat things that you can do. And I'll also show you the other one that'll be a little bit further down here. So there's Google Earth. You can see the whole globe. A little bit more than just um, viewing the Google Maps. And some of it actually has 3D parts and some kind of uh, Carmen San Diego game. That looks like fun.
Most of my family immigrated from Iran in the 1970s, but no one has been able to go back. This picture is around 65 years ago. When I hear a lot of these family stories, it's hard to have a real connection with that place because I've never been. But my family has used Google Earth to see those places. This is the neighborhood I used to ride my bike around. Today, I'm working on a project for my family on Google Earth. I'm mapping these family photos so that we can draw connections between the past and a new future. Today, we're putting together a digital tour of the Hudson River, highlighting some landmarks and other special places along the river in Google Earth. As an environmental advocacy organization, we're always looking for ways to connect people to rivers in an emotional way. The new creation tools allow us to put place marks, add photos and descriptions to really create a meaningful story. Today, we're working on a Google Earth project. We talk about how our community has grown up around a lake and how that lake has been kind of abused through pollution. My project is about the carousel that was around Onondaga Lake. The carousel was moved because Onondaga Lake got really polluted. As a community, we've all seen how that lake project has been cleaned up. Learning about where we live can benefit other people. Doing this project makes these places seem more real. I've been so fortunate to have these stories that have been given to me, and now I'm able to give something back to my family, and it brings me more context and understanding of what their lives were like. With this project, we hope that people will feel more connected to the Hudson so that they can reach out to their regulators, their decision makers, to ask them to do the right thing. The students are really proud because this is not just built for our little school community. We're making dynamic presentations for anyone on the planet to view and gain from. There you go. So a little bit of extra what they're up to. So it's still an app you can download. Of course, you can download the, the app to the devices as well. Uh, this is one that I talked to a family member actually a few days ago and one of the things that was interesting was you may, did not know, realize you could actually set up an alert. So if there's a search that you're searching for and you basically are not really getting any search results for it, you could basically type in and then if anything pops up, Google will actually send you an email letting you know that there is an alert or a new article was found about that topic. Just type it in here, set up your settings, and it'll send you a message. So if you're not finding what you're interested in, you can actually set up an alert. All kinds of stuff here. Here's the Google, the Google Duo. And I should have a little video for that. Hold on. Or you just do it like that. So this is Google's kind of, you know, their, their video chat. Good part about it is it's really uh, made to be uh, universal for all our devices. Fun stuff included as well. Big thing about privacy, encryption, and it's completely free to use as well. Google Flights. I'm gonna get into fonts. Here's our Google Photos again. Google Play talks about our Google Games. There's our Google Shopping we talked about. Street View, and there's our Keeps that we did a preview of. Sheets, Scholar, our Search, Slides. This is one of the newer things, of course. They're doing a, a game system that they're doing, uh, coming up with the Chromecast. So that's one of the things that they're pushing now. Have to have really great internet to be able to get that to work. This is Google Voice. This actually allows you to set up a um, cell phone, um, to set up a local number that someone can call, and basically they can get a voicemail, or you can have it forward your um, calls to like a different device. Uh, this is Waze. A lot of people really love this one. Um, one of the things I don't like about it is because it doesn't show. The, um, the Google Maps view, but maybe they've changed that since I last time seen it. It's very community driven, so people are posting things like "I saw something in the in the road," 
and then it'll actually alert other drivers, okay? Can't beat local advice, there you go. Plan, plan a trip with live map. There you go. Uh, talking about tolls, traffic, all kinds of stuff. And this is an app that um, you can download in the devices as well. So it kind of makes driving you posting things about accidents, issues, uh, being on the road, and other people uh, posting stuff. That's Waze. There's also YouTube Kids, YouTube Music, and YouTube TV, which is their TV channel. Now, I won't go into our business part, but I do want to show the brush part. This is a newer thing. It's connected up with the Oculus, which is full 3D, more than just kind of what we just talked about. And talks a little bit about some of the stuff that you can create but it's from Google as well. So it's kind of showing, uh, uh, this does require some equipment to do more than just kind of the headset, but I figured I'd show it because it's pretty interesting. And that's Tilt Brush. So let me show you one that actually shows Mm. actual user that I wanted you to see. Okay, so you can see them doing it, but actually seeing what the user is doing. So I don't think that they, is this it here? Let's see. Okay. some other stuff too uh, listed on here if you want to enjoy looking that up a little bit more I do recommend it but we've kind of come to the end of our class does anybody have any questions about this there is a lot um, to cover here and a lot to talk about too okay so what do we cover what did we talk about we covered a lot. We talked about our general search today. We talked about being able to look up, become a better searcher, looking up keywords, okay? And also talked about our 3D stuff, Google Photos, all kinds of great stuff, okay? Let's see if there's any final questions. Any final questions? And then we will start wrapping class up. <laughs> and I will see you tomorrow at 11 a.m., okay? So let's talk about what class we're gonna be doing tomorrow. Tomorrow we're gonna to be doing our Google Suite class at 2.30 in the afternoon, and tomorrow morning we're gonna be doing our video creating basics class, so come join me for that. We're gonna be using our free Windows 10 uh, uh, Google um, the Windows 10 uh, a video app, <laughs> and 
and I, it's kind of strange because it doesn't really have a name it's just Microsoft Photos app is what they call it but I need I really call it Windows 10 Microsoft Photos app and now it includes a video part video editor it kind of reminds me back in the day when we had um, the movie maker uh, 2 on Windows XP okay so we'll be covering that and of course here's some of our other classes we're going to be covering uh, this month and then Thursday we're going to be doing eBay basics and Facebook eBay and uh, um, Facebook marketplace basics and then we're also going to be doing birding on Thursday so join me for that our libraries are open with limited services and hours also curbside holds pickup is available you can go to gchrl.org for more details about that of course you can call into the library Monday through Friday 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. and please don't forget to like our Facebook pages and also our posts on our Facebook and keep up to date with what we got going on and also subscribe to our YouTube channel and like my videos and the other folks videos too we're on the YouTube right now. The easiest way to find this channel is GCHRL videos on Google search. Okay. So we've kind of come to the end of class. I want to thank everybody for attending. I'll see everybody tomorrow at 11 a.m. Uh, and if you're watching a replay of this, uh, I uh, love that you're watching our replay of videos and please share with friends or family and also come to some of our live videos like this because then of course you can ask questions and I can answer them too okay all right thank you so much I'll see you later have a great day mm -hmm.